Hi, in this video we're going to learn how to perform operations on polynomial functions. It is just basically operations of polynomials but in functions form. Let's have our review of basic concepts. A polynomial in X is an expression of this form where a, b, c are constant coefficients and n is a non-negative integer. The power is not negative, a, b, c are constant coefficients and that it is usually arranged from highest exponents up to constant. We know that there's different form of functions and they vary on the shapes of graph because of the degree. In your given, a is called a leading coefficient, which is, in this example, 3 is your leading coefficient. Notice that the highest exponent is 7. It is supposed to be arranged in decreasing power, and the last should be your constant or just the number. Here's another example of degree 11. If there is no constant, I mean, if there's no number in front, it means that your leading coefficient is 1. There's no constant because it ended with 9x. And there's one more. This is not in standard form. It should be negative 2x cubed first, followed by 3x squared plus 5 to be in the standard form. But this is, of course, still considered a polynomial. Now, the degree or order of a polynomial is given by the highest power of the variable. A polynomial of degree 1 is called linear. A polynomial of degree 2 is called quadratic, wherein you will see x squared. A degree 3 is called cubic. And degree 4 is quartic. There's specific names also for higher of degree 4, but usually... These are the most common ones, or actually from linear, quadratic, and cubic. Let's proceed. Polynomials are often expressed using function notation. For example, consider, consider the following polynomial function. f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 7. We can use this, this notation to substitute given values of x. Let's say f of x, find when the value of x, letter a, when the value of x is negative 2. Letter b, find the value of the function if x is equal to t plus 1. We're still in, we're still going, we're go, we keep coming back, going back to function notation because we always need it in algebra 2. Here's the work of your problem a. If x is negative 2, all the x's here, there's only one x actually, so this becomes negative 2, so negative 2 square is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 7 is 1. Now, if you have the value of x is t plus 1, this becomes t plus 1, and you are going to perform binomial square or FOIL method. It should result to t squared plus 2t plus 1 t squared plus 2t plus 1 and then it will be multiplied by 2 every term so this becomes 2t squared plus 4t plus 2 and then copy minus 7 then 2 minus 7 is negative 5 and that's it that's how you perform function notation it can be just an integer or it can be a binomial expression And now we are on the very first part of your actual lesson for the day. How do you perform addition and subtraction of polynomial functions? When two or more polynomials are added, subtracted, or multiplied, the result is another polynomial. Polynomials are added and subtracted by combining like terms. So you have here your first example, f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 5x plus 4, and g of x is equal to 2x minus 4. First problem, Find the sum of f of x and g of x. Letter B, problem, f of x minus g of x. To, to perform A, you just actually copy your f function. 
plus the g function 2x minus 4. And then combine like terms, like what was said on your concept. So copy 2x squared, it does not combine with the other term. Negative 5x and 2x combines as negative 3x. 4 plus negative 4 is cancelled out. So therefore, this is your final answer. <coughs> and we just perform addition of function f of x plus function g of x. Let's do the subtraction. So when you subtract, the same deal, but this one changes. But watch out. The negative will be multiplied to your g function. Look. So copy your function f minus the g of x to x minus 4. You have to put parentheses so, so that it reminds you that you are going to multiply the negative to every term inside because we're doing horizontal. Otherwise, if you're going to perf perform the vertical method of subtraction, so you don't really need this method, but since we're doing horizontal, we need to perform distribution of negative sign to every term inside. So you have copied the function f again, polynomial function f of x. This becomes minus 2x plus 4. And now you combine like terms. Bring down 2x squared because it does not combine with other terms. Negative 5x and negative 2x becomes negative 7x. 4 plus 4 is 8. And that's how you perform subtraction. On addition, there's nothing to worry. You just combine like terms. You, on your subtraction, remember, you need to write down your parentheses so that it reminds you that you are going to multiply or perform distributive property because there's supposed to be negative 1 here and negative 1 is multiplied to every term inside the parentheses. And that's how you add and subtract. How about multiplication? When two, when two polynomials are multiplied together, every term in the first polynomial must be distributed to every term in the second polynomial. The distributive property is used to rewrite the expression without parentheses. So you have your given 3x squared, f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 2, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 1. When you are going to multiply, this is actually a difficult category. If there's no sign here, it means multiplication, unless there's a plus or minus. If there is no sign, it means multiplication or a small dot. A small dot represents multiplication. Now, you copy your f of x, 3x squared minus 2, and then g of x, x squared plus 5x minus 1. Since we are multiplying, we are going to perform a lot of distributive properties. So here we go. The first distribution is 3x squared multiplied to x squared. It becomes 3x to the fourth power. Next, 3x squared plus 5x is 15x cubed. 3x squared minus 1 is negative 3x squared. We now proceed to negative 2 multiplied to the G of, x, G of x function, negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared, negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 1. No, positive 2. Next, we combine like terms, copy 3x to the power of 4 because it does not combine with other term. Bring down 15x cubed as well because it does not combine also with other term. Here, negative 3x squared and negative 2x squared can be combined. So you have negative 5x squared. And then copy the rest, negative 10x plus 2. Of course, if it's binomial times binomial, the work will be lesser. Or if you have a monomial times polynomial, it should be easier. Just it will be lesser distributive property. And that's how you pull multiply polynomial function. It's just basically multiplying polynomials. But you need to watch out because this time, whatever is the problem, and there's a lot of functions given, you watch out that you need to multiply the function f and the function g. Let's have the last operation. How do you divide? When dividing polynomials, you can apply longhand division, synthetic division, or perform factoring, and cancel common factor to simplify the fraction. 
check which division techniques technique works better for each problem sometimes the functions are not possible to divide and left written as a function fraction form let's have an example you have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 and g of x is equal to x minus 2. if you are asked to divide a function f of x by g of x you are going to write the function x squared minus 4 on top of the fraction and x minus 2 which is your g function underneath if it's not possible to divide this is your final answer but probably it's possible what i'm going to show is i'm going to use factoring technique because x squared minus 4 is possible to factor because if you do your longhand division it's gonna be messy sometimes so let me show you how x squared minus 4 this was your previous lesson factoring of polynomial x squared minus 4 is difference of 2 square it has a factor of x plus a number times x minus a number so since 4 is a perfect square so you have to x plus 2 times x minus 2 and copy your g of x your function g x minus t underneath if you can if you know this we could actually cancel x minus 2 and the one not cancelled is your final answer remember if it's not possible to divide your answer is already whatever you have after writing it in fraction form Sometimes functions are not possible to divide and left written as a fraction form. But if it is possible, check which division technique works or which division technique is easier for the problem. I did show you here a factoring technique and I did cancel a, a, a common factor. And whatever is unfactored, I mean uncancelled, that's your final answer. And that's how you perform operations on polynomial functions it is just like operating polynomials except that you are given specific names of polynomial function it can be any letters and so you watch out which ones is supposed to be operated thank you